Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're in the garage working on Christine's car. That That's Christine. If you guys could tell from the thumbnail, uh, we're replacing her stereo. Now, she does not have an OEM stereo. She has a aftermarket little Kenwood finger here that actually has pretty much uh, stopped working. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it, it turns to the evangelical um, preacher channel. Yeah, so basically her stereo is telling her that she needs to be more religious because it keeps changing to the, the religious stations, right? Yeah, they preach at me. But we're gonna fix that today because we have a brand new stereo on the table up there. So we actually have quite the awesome stereo. We're gonna be putting in a Pioneer DM AW4660 NEX. Basically, this is a fully touch screen stereo. It's awesome. It's got all the amazing bells and whistles, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. And we're gonna take it a little bit step further. So I bought everything you see except for that on Crutchfield. And the nice part about Crutchfield is they basically help you design your package and give you everything as well as send you some instructions so we have a dash mount system which was free which is the exact same one that's already in the car so we're probably not gonna be replacing the one that's in there but we have it if we need it uh, like I said it's free when you buy with crush build so we have the stereo and then what's cool is we bought some additional attachments. So this right here is a micro switch that's gonna allow us to use the steering wheel controls with the new stereo. Now, she doesn't have the steering wheel controls. So that's where this box right here comes in. So this part right here from Hyundai is the steering wheel controls for her model car. So that way she'll have steering wheel controls to be able to use her stereo, which is really dope. This right here is the wiring harness, the OEM wiring harness that we're gonna use to wire into the vehicle. So we're gonna use this to connect to the car which will connect to the stereo. We got some wiring we're gonna have to do there. It's gonna be fun and awesome, you know, wiring, love wiring. And we have a aux cable slash USB retention cable. So this is another cable that was an option with the Crutchfield kit, but it'll allow her to use the aux input and a USB input that's already in the car. So in her car, like you can see here, she has the cruise control features already right here, but she doesn't have the steering wheel control. So basically with this, we'll be able to open up the steering wheel, put in the steering wheel controls, and with the micro switch that we have, it'll work with the new stereo that'll be mounted right here. And with the retention cable, we'll be able to continue to use the USB and aux input that's down here. And that USB will now work for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, depending on what she uses, which she has an iPhone, which we can talk about later. If you guys don't know, I'm Android for life, and um, she actually is Android as well, but has an iPhone because of work purposes. It was free, F-R-E-E, -E, that spells free. Don't put and that in there. <laughs> Put it in there and you can't blame someone for having a free phone so now that we've shown you all the bits and pieces and parts let's go show you the tools that we're gonna be using and i'm not necessarily what all tools i'm gonna be needing well i know all the main tools the tools that we're gonna need to do the main stereo install when we get into uh tearing apart this steering wheel to put the controls in and we work on the usb thing that's the additional stuff that i'm not entirely sure about you will need a computer too for the micro switch controller. So we'll have to hook that up to a computer so that we can tell the little controller box what this car is. So the inputs from this right here go into that little micro switch box and then they output to the Pioneer head unit. So basically that micro switch takes these inputs from this and converts them to what the Pioneer wants to hear or see to control the volume, next calls, all that sort of thing. Let's go ahead and check out the tools and then we'll unbox everything that's in the stereo. I've already done it, it's a lot, and we will start on this install and I will be walking you through every step of the way as best as possible and Christine will film all the struggles as I go. Yay! So let's go look at all the tools. So here are the majority of the tools that I pretty Pretty sure I'm gonna need so all the wires I'm gonna be doing solder you can just twist them together if you wish but I'm gonna be doing solder and heat shrink wrap so we have the solder and iron we have the solder we have heat shrink wrap we have a lighter to melt the heat shrink wrap all that good stuff wire strippers might not need those wire clippers electrical tape trim removal tool so plastic trim removal tool multimeter not entirely sure if I'm gonna need that but I might need that for the steering wheel controls a handy dandy screwdriver, a drill to make it go even quicker instead of that, and not entirely sure if I'm gonna need it, but it never hurts to have a full socket set ready to go at will. So we're gonna go through all the little bits and pieces that come in the box. Um, first off, like I already said, this is the standard one that's already in the car, so we're not gonna bother with this. Um, but we will be taking apart the car to see where all's in there. So you already seen it, we got the controls right here for the thing. 
We have the USB and aux cable retention cable. So this is gonna allow us to use the USB and everything. We have the two OEM wiring harnesses. So these will hook up to the OEM harnesses. And then these have all the wires that we're gonna to have to connect to this stuff over here to make it work. And uh, this is a little wiring diagram, wire list of all the wires and what they go to from the speakers, illumination, the power antenna, etc. So that goes with those two. Inside the micro switch controller here, we get um, instructions which basically say to download the uh, program on your computer. This is the micro switch itself. And then these are our wiring cables for this. That's what we're gonna be using that for right there. And now the piece de resistance. So the stereo. Now we've already opened this so it doesn't look exactly like it would be if you open it for the first time but we have a variety of cables so this one is the gps this is the gps sensor not that we're going to be using it we have a remote in case you want a remote yay this is a usb extender to be able to use the usb so they send you a longer one this is the adapter to be usb type c to usb uh regular like your phone input microphone which uh she already has one from the kenwood but we'll see which one sounds better or if the one in there works with the current one so we have a microphone so uh this allows us to use the aux if you have a separate amp, so if you're not using the car's factory amp or the, the head unit's amp, if you want to power the speakers with separate amps and do a really badass sound system or do a subwoofer, they have the front outputs, they have for left and right, they have the rear outputs for left and right, the subwoofer output, and it's got two camera inputs. So if you have a rear backup camera, which we might be doing in the future, we can hook up a rear uh, backup camera and you have a secondary one. So if you have two different backup cameras, I guess you can do that. And it has a rear monitor output. So if you wanted to put uh, screens in the back of the back seats for your children or whatever, you can do that and play movies for them, for your kids, so pretty dope. So that's that harness. And this is the main one. So this is the main harness that has all the different outputs for all the different speakers. And what's really nice that I've noticed is they actually kind of labeled all of them. So this will be the input for when you put the car into reverse to change the backup camera. It has all the speaker, everything basically is built into this. Instructions. Gotta love them. But the piece de resistance, the actual stereo itself, the stereo. So this right here is the Pioneer head unit stereo. I have no idea how big this is. But um, this is basically it. So this fits in a standard double unit size and it has all the outputs on the back that we're gonna tap into to use. Let's go ahead and start tearing apart the car. So we're in the car and the first thing we're gonna be doing is removing this whole entire plastic insert. So you would need a plastic removal tool. So we're taking apart this surround. So I don't know if you got a wide enough angle to be able to shoot all that. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start down here at the bottom and we're basically just gonna pry up on the silver part of this plastic surround Whoa. and do that all the way around the actual car. So that'll pop that side off of all the nine clips. And now we're gonna do the other side, similar to just how we did that one. And about when you get to this point, you can kind of just pull on it by hand, just be careful. Mm. Basically, we've now removed everything. So now we can remove the six screws. They're Phillips screws, or you could actually use a socket as well. There's one up here at the top right here. There is one right here, one here. And then similar spots on the other side. There's one here, one here, and one up top. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the drill and we will remove all six of those and we'll be able to take this whole thing out. So just a side note, this is a aftermarket one already, but it's the same process to take the OEM one out. There's six screws basically you need to take out for the OEM one, OEM one as well, in the exact same spots. Because this uh, unit that's already in there is an aftermarket retrofit. So this will allow us to remove this. Oh, it takes out the clock too? It should, yes. Oh, huh. The clock's part of it. So that is the surround piece right there. What I'm gonna do is remove the clip for the uh, clock. Like I said, this is the exact same piece that comes with the kit we got. Basically, when you uh, take out the OEM one, you'll have to disconnect the factory stereo and you will retrofit this into place on this uh, surround, basically. So this comes out and mounts on the new aftermarket surround from the OEM one. If you guys are curious about that, if you buy all this stuff on Crutchfield, Crutchfield gives you instructions on how to do this. So now what we're doing is gonna remove the actual actual Kenwood unit right here and this is where those other four screws come in so there's four screws that we're going to re remove to remove this combo right here so this is a shelf stereo in one we're going to be removing it and putting in just a solid touchscreen panel so back to the drill one here 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 and there these should be pretty easy to see and this whole thing We'll slide out like some. And you can see right here, all of the wiring has already been done in the past for all these different wires and stuff. And one thing that might be cool, and we'll see, this previous uh, install might have the same wiring harness already hooked up that we need for this one. So we might be able to reuse it. We will see. I am going to doubt that though. 
So plug that out. This is the microphone. We can unplug that. And our antenna, which is normally the most stubborn of all. Bye bye, evangelical. So what we're gonna be doing is actually removing the stereo out there and mounting these same mounts. So the same mounting system will go onto the new stereo. But right now I'm going to be uh, in wire mess territory looking at what we got to work with. This right here, the steering wheel controls, I'm missing the wiring harness that I need. So I actually have two of these on order because this one said it wasn't coming so I ordered another one. And the other one is actually both the another cruise control and another steering wheel control and it has the wiring harness So we will resume with that portion at a later date We're gonna focus mainly on putting all the wiring together for everything minus installing the wheel control So we'll still install the micro switch and do all that sort of stuff But we won't be doing that until uh, we get all this in so let's go ahead and uh i'm gonna walk you guys through all of the soldering and all the wiring that i have below me and one thing that makes it helpful this is the crutch field basically they sent me this which is all the instructions that you need for this so there's instructions that on how to take apart what i just did in there and we can click this for a color-coded wiring guide so this is going to walk you through each and every wire. So the first step, we need to connect all three of these red wires together, etc. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna connect all of these wires to their correct wires for all the different speakers, etc. So this is what we're gonna be working on now. Got the soldering iron all heating up. We're gonna get the solder, get some heat shrink wrap, which is right there, and get going. So I haven't really been filming anything because uh, I've been trying to get around to this. So I was able to remove the dash, which is just like four screws, two on either side, and feed down in the aux slash USB cable so I could unplug the factory right there, the white plug, and plug in the purple plug right there. So those are hooked up now. Now I can put this back away and uh, move on to installing the dash. Also, I've taken apart this kicker panel down here. There's a screw there and then two screws on the side. Pop the panels out. Try and get to the re the parking brake wire, which is pin 24. I'll show you that here in a bit, but we're moving on to this stuff now. So, it might look like a mess, but the wiring harness is done. Everything has been soldered, heat shrink wrapped together as far as I can get. Like I said, we'll touch on the microcontroller and the uh, controls at a later date. But now, need to transfer this mount right here to the new one right here. So I have the screws for it, as well as I'll take these mounts off and place them on the new one. So we're basically removing her old microphone with her old one. You can kind of see it's a little bit different. I'm gonna put up the new one up here. So what I'm doing is I'm going to tape this cable to this and fish it up through using the other microphone cable. You guys obviously don't have this already. All you need to do is take yourself a metal wire and run it through here. Similar to what I'm about to do. Just gonna pull that up through. And now we have the microphone cable on the inside. So that's that cable. Now we move on to the wiring harness. So here's our mess of a wiring harness. We'll probably clean it up with some black tape, but or electrical tape as you, some of you guys might know. This cable right here is gonna go to our parking. So this is what connects into the head unit, and the two white ones are the ones that are gonna connect into the unit. So we have like four different plugs right now. This goes to, this is gonna be part of our connection for the uh, controls, but these are the two that are gonna go to the OEM one. So this one goes to, that one stays up there. We're gonna connect both these up pretty straightforward. This one connects to here, and then this one will connect into here. So those are two connected right there. Now we have a variety of different things we're gonna have to still hook up. So we do need to take this wire and feed it down through this, uh, right where our microphone went. We're gonna feed it right down through here. Feed this wire down here, because this is gonna go over to our fuse box and connect into the parking sensor. We have a variety of different cables going everywhere right now. So we'll wire that up later on. Now, so we have this part is gonna go to our microcontroller eventually. So I'm just gonna tuck that up in there. We'll get to that at a later date. We're not really worried about that today. Today, we have this, which is our main harness gonna connect into the actual stereo. We have our secondary harness right here. This is gonna do the aux. So we actually don't have the cable for it, but I need an adapter cable that goes from RCA to aux to do our aux cable that's down here. And then we have the HDMI adapter, which is right here. Well, USB adapter. So this goes to the USB cable, which is right here, which will plug into the back of the stereo and be our USB. Bringing in our stereo, 
One thing we're gonna have to adjust eventually is the sides so that we can get it so it's lined up just right up here when we put it in to work with our back end harness. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect up everything so we can look here, USB goes down here. Our main harness is gonna connect in right here. Our secondary harness with all of our other connections, which we're not using any of these connections. Like I said, this is additional stuff like a backup camera and stuff we're not gonna be using. We will be using the aux eventually. So we're gonna set that up in there, connect it up so it's ready to go for future use. All right, aux, we'll just tuck our aux up in there for now. A lot of wires, a lot of cables. We have our microphone, microphone plugs in right here. We have our antenna, antenna plugs in over here on the side. It's a little hard to get it up in here. Antenna plugs in right there so we can get all of our AM goodness. And it also has GPS, but we're not gonna bother with GPS right now. I'm not entirely sure if you need the GPS for the Android Auto or anything like that, but I believe it just uses your phone. So what we're gonna do now is just tuck everything in, everything back up in here. A lot more wires than we had on the previous stereo. There it is, input. Now we're gonna test fit the surround. So just for now, I'm gonna put two screws in here so we can test fit this. So now that that's secure, we can get the back plate and we can test fit it to see if it's gonna be the right distance, which I don't have to worry about that just yet. Clamp this in. And as you can see, I am way off. So we're definitely gonna to have to extend that forward a lot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a screwdriver and loosely tighten these screws. That way I can still move it, but it'll kind of hold its position. And no, I don't have the antenna hooked up right now, but that'll come at a later date. So we pulled it out. Now we're gonna test fit again. So we need to go up too. So I need to go ahead and make it go up as well. You gotta love test fit. Well, I spent some time and I have the mount situated. Basically I had to adjust the screws to get it just right to fit in here. Um, but you just mess with the screws and get it positioned to where it will work right. Christine's been going through and setting up all of her fun stuff on the tablet. Meanwhile, I've been doing the antenna stuff like you guys saw. So I put the new mic up here, ran it over, and now I'm doing the GPS sensor. And this is crucial to use wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with this new head unit, which is dope. You don't need a wire. So, and I also hooked up the USB, which we're having a little bit of trouble with right now. And I'm not entirely sure why why that is it might be because the car is just running on aux power maybe it needs a little more power to run it we'll see but so right now I'm mounting the GPS so with the GPS we have a metal plate right here so this is gonna be the first thing that we mount and I'm putting it up here so I can run the wire down and around over to the head unit make it nice and clean so this will go on first then we'll use the double-sided tape to connect the actual GPS module so metal sheet double-sided tape and then you mount the sensor on top of that and then we feed the wire around and plug it into the head unit All right, so with the GPS module up there, I went ahead and sealed off the uh, A-pillar here and ran the wires over here, hooked them up to the back of the unit, which is right there, the little green wire up top, it's a GPS. Microphone's hooked up, we checked the microphone, it works. Only thing left to do, which we will not be able to get done tonight, because we don't have the part for it, is the steering wheel controls. But when that's hooked up, it's gonna be dope, so you can just turn the volume right there from the steering wheel. But just a little update, the little uh, parking, we're not sure if I need this wire or not, because as of right now, it's, it's not complaining that I'm not using it. So I'm just gonna not use it for now. It's already ran there in case we need it. And then the reverse wire we don't need because we don't have a reverse camera. Maybe we'll do it in the future, we'll, we'll see. But right now we're pretty much gonna button it up. The only thing that's not working that I can't figure out is the USB. It works to charge a phone. That's the weird part, but only mine. And it says it's low power, which makes absolutely no sense. There's one little thing I wanna try before we do anything, but as you can see, it gets power. And I plugged it right into the back of the unit and it gets power too. But it, it's like it says it's not enough power and it won't connect and I can't find it in the settings anywhere. I'll update the you in a second if I can figure out anything. But other than that, we're about to wrap everything up and put it all back together so it's ready to go in the morning. Update! We fixed it! They give you this USB Type-C extension cable right here. So it plugs into the back right here, this cable right here. Then you plug in the adapter to that and for some reason using this additional cable right here, I don't know why. This must be some sort of special USB Type-C or maybe this back port isn't an actual USB type C but hook that up to that and it works like Android Auto and everything popped up so we're good we also found out you do have to hook up the parking cable over here because uh, when I hooked up Android Auto it said please put your car in the park because it's, it's waiting for the signal that the car is in the park to allow you to use Android Auto. So we gotta hook that up. Might not do that tonight though, because it's pretty easy to do. Just gotta tap into the one pin there. But we're gonna clean up the main stereo unit for now and get that all assembled and let's see what time it's at and uh, we'll go from there. Anyways, uh, Christine's gonna film me as I put this all back together. Didn't 
do anything. So as you saw, I tapped into pin number 22. It's right beside the pink pin. So the pink's in number 23, the orange is in number 22, and then 21 is blank, and so is 24. So it's pin number 22. Look for the orange wire. It's right beside the pink wire on the bottom right row, and it's right down there. So as you can see, I got the mount back up. I'm gonna basically finish up putting all these little side panels back together, and it'll be all good to go. All right guys, that completes phase one of the install. Being getting the actual unit installed and working. We hooked up the uh, parking brake wire. We hooked up this, we got the USB working. Also, we hooked up the GP GPS up there. Installed the microphone. And then uh, this is the unit right now. We're running wireless uh, Apple CarPlay from Christine's phone. We can go to the main menu here and we can go through all the different functionality and settings. It's got Alexa, radio. We can go back to Apple CarPlay. So you can use this device as a standalone or I'm assuming most people use the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto nowadays, but it does have Alexa built into it and a lot of other cool features and settings built into it. You can change your theme, etc. but most people are just gonna use this as a screen, use it for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which is done wirelessly. And actually, if you go to the settings and we go to connections, we've linked both my Galaxy and her iPhone and we can interchange between both of them. If we're both connected to this uh, device, we can both interchange between both options uh, very easily, which is kind of cool. So if you got two different phones, two iPhones, two Androids, etc., you can interchange between both of them in the same car set up for the same connectivity. Basically, it connects to the last one that was connected to it. Pretty easy, pretty awesome. So it's an awesome little screen. Christine's going to use it. But I'll pick up on this video again when we go to install the controls on the left side right here and walk you through all the steps for that, which is gonna be the piece de resistance on this install. And that right there is the install of the stereo. Now, this video got kind of long, so I wanted to put a complete separate video for when we install the steering wheel controls because there's actually a lot that goes into this, especially on the computer that I personally haven't even looked into or even tried yet, so that's gonna be fun. But I did wanna quickly just say thank you to everyone on this channel. I mean, we've grown it to over 7,000 subscribers now in literally a year this is awesome this is so exciting and it's awesome to be working on different projects with different cars we got Christine's car we're doing a little bit of stuff with Drake's truck again Drake actually just put a monster lift kit on his truck this thing is absolutely insane I didn't film it because that was his own little thing, but it's absolutely insane. Christine's car, we have the steering wheel controls to do. We have a bunch of Plasti Dip. We got a really fun Plasti Dip project coming up. And of course, on the Taco, we got more mods coming for the Taco. Got some little LED mods I wanna do. I definitely wanna get an exhaust on it this year, but right now, uh, financials are a little tight at, at the beginning of the year. We'll, we'll get an exhaust on it here soon. So if you guys actually have a suggestion for an exhaust for the Tacoma, the TRD Tacoma, uh, leave it down in the comment section down below because I've been looking and researching for the best uh, exhaust system and I really can't figure it out. I'm looking for a black exhaust. It's kind of like my only black exhaust. Sounds good, not extremely loud, but sounds good, that sort of thing. But anyways guys, this is getting extremely long, so like the video, leave a comment down below, hit the subscribe button, turn on post notifications, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Taco Rick out, peace.